Well, hello and welcome to another Love Rugby League Weekly. I'm Dave Parkinson. This is Drew Derbyshire. We're here to talk all the way through the results, the fixtures and have that big debate about the structure. Uh, we'll be also hearing some of your thoughts as well. So thank you very much if you've tweeted me over the course of the last couple of days. If you're watching this and you're thinking, hey, I want to mention on next week's show, by all means get in touch at dparkitrl over Twitter, and that ensures it gets to me. I suppose they can contact you as well, Drew, can't they? Yeah, they can, at Derbyshire Drew. And, and uh, just, just send it whatever you want in, even some abuse if you want to. Oh, no, we don't want any of that stuff. So it's all part of full of, full of games, isn't it, Dave? All right, well, banter. We're going to call it banter, <laughs> are we? Yeah. Uh, anyway, Drew, how was the weekend for you? Very good. Uh, I enjoyed uh, the... A couple of games actually at the weekend, but I didn't enjoy the Widness and uh, Halifax game on Saturday. Just in case you're wondering, we have got a selection of programmes in front of us. Now, the idea I've got moving forward for this, just to let you know, is that we put uh, the games that we've been to, the programmes that we kind of collect, because it keeps it a bit more current, doesn't yeah. it? So that's the, the big idea. So, uh, why didn't you enjoy the Witness game? Come on. It was one of the dullest games I've I've seen this year. I can't I can't remember a game. What, actually, the the Warrington eighty whole ten game was probably worse than than the Witness game. But I thought it was just poor. I think I thought Witness were even though they won the first game was it in eighteen in eighteen um, attempts should we say? And they were still poor. They were still dropping the ball. And fair play to Halifax, they, they were down on numbers, and and they gave five reserve kids a chance to uh, to shine in. No, no, you say five reserve kids a chance. They've been playing all season. Well, those they kids. have been playing all season. But They've they come through the few. reserves. They were missing a few, though, weren't they? They were missing a few. They were missing, quite they were missing a, few. a few. And Halifax have got first team squad. It's quite slim, anyway, isn't it? The, the first team squad, and that's why they dip into the reserves then. And I just thought, well, Halifax gave it a goal. They, if they actually took the chances, Halifax, they they could have really challenged Widness, but they didn't, and they came up with a couple of uh, dead dead sets near the Widness line, and Widness, with a couple of individual pieces of uh, brilliant, shall we say, from Kristen Inu for that first try when he just out muscled the Halifax defence. Apart from that, we didn't see much at all, did we? I thought he was the difference, actually, Kristen Inu. Uh, you've jumped straight into the qualifiers. So Sorry. I'll, no, no, Sorry, that's yeah. OK. That's yeah. OK. I'm, I'm happy to run with it. So this was the game that took place on Saturday between Widnes Vikings and Halifax. Uh, as Drew mentioned, first winning God knows how long for Widnes Vikings. Uh, 26 points to 12. I get where you're coming from. Um, I'll level with you. It felt like a championship game. I've seen a lot of championship games this season, so I'm not decrying it by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, you would expect a team that's been playing Super League, Rugby League, all the way through the season to perhaps be a little bit more sparkling, a little bit better. Um, well, you, there wasn't you, much difference, was there, really? You, you would, you, you'd expect them to be better, but when, when you've lost, is it was it 20... One was it twenty? And this is all, in a row? this is going up. No, it was, a little bit. They were on forty two loss no, loss running. Obviously, it was eight, eighty. It was eight, well. It was this. The, I think this was the, in, in seventeen since the Coventry game, which you'd, ex, you'd expect them to beat Coventry at home in the cup. Let's face it. And but I mean, the don't game, be so decrying, you Super League fan. You, they could have sprung a surprise. Right, I mean, they didn't. Oh, oh, they right, didn't oh. at the time. Like, hey, I'm, listen. Respect to Coventry, and I, and I do like what they're doing. Alan Robinson's doing a great job at the Bears, but you you'd expect full time Super League witness to be Coventry Bears at home. I'm glad that you put your in, you know your in thanks into to, to and that knowledge the job that they're doing down in Coventry. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. doing a br- they're, excellent. They're, they're doing a brilliant job, and, and they've got I noticed with it with the team that they have got, they've got a lot of students playing who play in like the Student World Cup, don't they? And and the student qualifiers, they've got, they've got a, a few players who play for Ireland uh, students. Uh, England, is it line art students? Is that what they call the, sh- the students? There's England side? University side, yeah, and, the combined uh, university and the Will students as well. So they are doing a good job, but you, let's face it, you would expect Witness to beat Coventry at all at full time, a full time team beating a part time team. Well, they did, and that was 17 games ago, wasn't it? Well, it was, yeah. And, and I, going back to my point, I think is it was it 20, 21 league games in a row because obviously they've been losing before that that Challenge <laughs> Cup um, win over Coventry. And when I, I, I just don't, I, feel, I, I, I kind of feel sorry for the club, really. I really do, and I sympathise uh, with the fans of Witness because 
it's just not happening on the field. And that the team, the team on paper, it, it is good enough to play in Super League. It, and I, uh, and when I was uh, speaking to Halifax's media guy Jacob Kilbride in the game, I was like, you got Charlie Gubb, who only a couple of months ago was playing for Canberra in in the NRL. I know he only made a handful of appearances this year, but he was playing in the NRL a few months ago, mm-hmm. coming up against the likes of. Uh, Dan Fleming, who's obviously only a part-time player at Halifax, and Dan was full-time last year at Toronto, and has been full-time for the rest of his career. Yeah, he, well, he, well, half of them are part, most of them have played part-time all the career. And I was like, well, when, when you've got NRL p- calibre players who, who have been who are playing up against part-time opposition, who who are probably on the work site in the morning after. Uh, you'd expect them to to beat Halifax. That's what they did. It wasn't comprehensive at all, and I think it was a uh, a little bit worrying for Witness because even though it was it was the final score twenty six twelve twenty six twelve it was yeah tries just by the way from well Haraki uh, Patrick Harvan and well, Kristen Inu. To, to be fair to Will Haraki, that was probably one of his best games I've seen of him in a Witness. I'd agree. I'd agree. I thought he was very effective, wasn't he? And he roughed it up, and, and you could and I think the size difference certainly played its part between Witness and Halifax because if you look at Witness's park it was much bigger than uh, Halifax's because you've got Harrison Hansen, Charlie Gubb, um, Chris Halston, um, you've, you've, it's all over the park. Patrick Arvan is a twice the size of James Saltonstall who I thought also did a, a good job. Anyone else stand out for you from a Halifax point of view? I think Scott Morell always stands out doesn't he? He, he always just seems to, to run the game pretty well. Uh, I think is it is it Johnston? The, the half yeah, back? Ben Johnston. Yeah, half back, yeah. He, he, he looks uh, quite a, a nice uh, little neat player who could possibly have a crack in Super League. Well, he's been there once before as a kid yeah. and ended up being on the, the wrong side of the whole reserve debate and everything else that you can mention there. He's gone out to Halifax, he's made his name as a, a top-end championship player, one of the top performers over the course of the season. So I'm glad you mentioned him. Cause Ch- Chester Butler as well. Chester Obviously Butler. for Wales at last year's World Cup. He didn't stand out too much against Witness, but he has his the championship uh, this season, hasn't he? His star is just rising and rising and rising. I saw him a few years ago playing at Siddle. Uh, so he came through all national conference league level. Um, Halifax took a punt on him, played him in the reserves. He's graduated from that to become a regular first team of this season. Good player. Good uh, I, player. I, re- I read a piece the, uh, last week saying that Chester Butler was, was very close to, to finishing quitting rugby league if it wasn't for, for Halifax's reserves. I'm not getting onto the reserves, but that just shows how, how much uh, time with, a, with a, a professional club can make doesn't it because if he was that close away from quitting the sport Wales International now is is one of being one of the best players in the championship this year but all credit all credit to the reserves and Richard Marshall Richard Marshall also heavily picked out praise for Brandon Moore as well after mm-hmm. the game didn't another he? one did he come through at Castleford originally yeah yeah and then he obviously he was too old for for the academy so he got let go and then he's been in like this Castleford case the then previous couple in of this years. case then just to get on to your favourite subjects, because I am going to run with it just for a minute, and just just for a minute. Should we even have an academy side then? Should it not just be reserves? Because then those lads are getting exposed to uh, they're getting exposed to playing against men. Or, no, or should we have something, for example, like where you can sign a player and play him back on registration with the amateur club? Well, that, that, that's what. It can happen in scholarship, can't it? If you, the the sixteens can play for for amateur clubs on on. A I'm on about getting rid of scholarship. I don't think scholarship does anybody any good. I think I think this can last longer than a minute, Dave. This discussion. We'll have a special. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I yeah. We well, do, I think we do need. We, that. we, we, we need, we need a, special, a special, don't we? We do need to have a special on this. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Um, well, okay then. Sorry. Go briefly on it. <laughs> <laughs> but. But I, I just think it's it's great what Halifax are doing. I think they're a good club. They're a solid club, sustainable club. I know we we hear all these stories about lower league clubs like the likes of Barra and Swinton who have struggled with financial difficulties in previous years. But I think Halifax are a great example of of what a, a well run run club can be. Like they've got reserves, they've got a, a very good fan base, good supporters, trust as well. All for fair play to Halifax and Richard Marshall, brilliant coach. Top four finishes help as well, currently in the championship, because you do get a, a nice little slice of the pie, don't you? I know we'll come on to structure in a bit, but he, he also 
he also had, had his uh, Rich Marshall had his say in the, the press conference on the new structure in the after the game, and he yeah. was. I mean, to be to be first, he was very honest, wasn't he, in, in what he was saying. He said the, the super eights or, or the qualifiers uh, system has actually benefited Halifax because they get to test themselves these part time players against this full time and super league opposition. But he also said, mm, is is the qualifiers the the eight system a good thing for the game? Then he's not sure. So he it, it was very honest, but I don't, I don't think that the system will affect Halifax too much because they're a very steady club, aren't they? They are, they are. Right, we'll come back to structure. We've just spent ten minutes talking about that. No, no, we've game. we've got a good uh, we've we've got a we've got a good twenty minute segment coming up on that. I'm going to have to be quite strict with the time as well, to be fair. Um, other results from the qualifiers. Hull Kingston Rovers, it took a couple of really late tries to see off London Broncos, who have uh, been a breath of fresh air in these qualifiers, haven't they? Finished 30 points to 18. A couple of tries there for Greenwood. Uh, the all-important one came, courtesy of the man they named twice, Vi Vi. Great player. He's been a great signing for Hull KR uh, this season. He only arrived halfway through the year and he's been a sensational player for, for Rovers. He's been really important. He can play on the wing or at centre. I remember watching the, the World Cup last year and covering it for LoveRubbyLeague.com and he, he stood out because he, he played for USA and he, he, he always stood out in every game as well as Corey Maclem as well who's now at, at Sheffield Eagles. A brilliant player, all okay, care. They're doing the job, and that's what you expect them to do, isn't it? In the, in the qualifiers, London are having a good goal, fair play to them. They're sticking games. They're just lacking that little bit of extra quality at the moment, aren't they? They, they always seem to just come up short in these qualifiers, but a, a very good building block. And Danny Wall is is doing a, a great job with London this year. They're again not far off. I mean, looking at the London point they're, difference, minus yeah, thirteen. They're not, level on points with Toulouse. Yeah, they've they've not been far throughout the qualifiers, have they? Since, since that Witness game, that when they when they beat Witness, they laid down a marker, then didn't they? And, and it uh, happy f is it Furang Furangi? Happy Pepper Pepperangi. 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 I always get me. Uh, I always get me words a little bit. We're trying to pronounce his name, but him and Jonas Summit have, have built a great combination in the halves, and they're not far off. I don't think it'll happen this year, but they're not far off reaching that million pound game. And I think that could be the, the next building block to, to aim to if you if you're the Broncos. Uh, next game, Leeds Rhinos against Salford Red Devils. This one had a little bit of controversy in it. Very much so, Dave. I think it was Richie Mallory who went down, wasn't it? Was it with three minutes of five minutes to go or something like that? I think it was, it was late on in the game, and uh, I can't remember who was in the challenge with Richie Myler, but Richie Myler did go down very easily from the penalty, as though. There a sniper or something <laughs> in one of the stands, and he's he's just got picked off. But but uh, I felt so I felt sorry for Sofa. Could, What's could, the hands in though? What's the hands in on the uh, challenge? Or the wars, but it's it's like in football if you say oh there's contact when, when it's in the box, it's a penalty. It's, it, they are contact sport. Do, do you know what I mean? I, I think it was very 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 soft the the penalty, mm -hmm. and I think uh, it, we we see this creeping into the sport now, don't we? we we see players buying penalties. Simulation's it's, been in for years, though. But it's it's getting. I think I think it's getting worse because you you get players who just throw the ball when when the opposition's on the floor. You get players who just throw the ball left, so it hits them. They get a new set of six when they can't. But they clearly can't can't uh, clear the rope. But I think you just see it creeping a little bit more now. There's not much we can do about it, to be honest. But the referees, if they think they've seen hands in, then. They've seen hands in, haven't they? And you, you can't. You, you Our team's can't getting really. coached this way, then. Well, we don't know, do we? We do. <laughs> Unless we're part of that club, we do. We don't know if they're getting coached. I, I don't think. I don't. Th I couldn't see the likes of Kevin Sinfield and Jimmy Laws to to coach that into players. And I can't. I can't see in other clubs like the likes of Lee Radford doing it to his players or Sean Wayne to to his players. I, I, can't, I, I find that hard to believe, to be honest, but. Um, we just see it happening more and more. I don't think there is much we can do at all. I thought Salford deserved uh, more from the game, at least that 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 point. And you probably would have said it would have been a, a fair result, a fair outcome of the game. I thought seeing the highlights of it again, there was some some really nice try scored, weren't there? Yeah, there was, and and I've I've really enjoyed watching Salford in these qualifiers. I've, in in the Super League season, they had that injury crisis, didn't they? Where, where they were playing players out of position, 
uh, would Hunter, Hunter go in the, the halves rather than playing at nine, where he's normally playing? But with the, the arrival of Jackson Essens, I know he didn't play in the game. But I think oh, you got you mentioned. I was waiting for it. I was waiting. He's a, he loves Jackson Essens. You can tell he's part of the fan club. Yeah, yeah I certainly. I'm, I think he's a joy to watch. Darcy Lucas, Lusick as well. But since he's coming, I think they just added that little bit of a confidence boost to the, to the team and I think it's just lifted the team as a whole. Robert Lewis playing better for it as well because he was playing next to a, a proper half-back or obviously he didn't against Leeds but uh, he's, he's enjoying his game more and I, I've, I think I think positively for, for Saul for next year I think that if they could add a couple of members to the side maybe keep, keep Hastings if they can have, add a couple of members to the side like strong quality mm -hmm. members then I think the depth if the depth is there, then they can they can get that eighth, seventh uh, spot. Toronto against Toulouse. Well, what next year will it with this structure? But we'll come to that. We will come to that. I, I can tell you're buzzing for it. <laughs> you're absolutely buzzing. T and uh, talking to buzzing, you've got something else to mention in a couple of minutes, haven't you? But um, just before we do and move on to that, uh, Toronto Wolfpack against Toulouse, they've given us some tremendous games this season. This one was no different. Plenty of talking points. You've got uh, Jack Bussy channeling his inner Mike uh, Tyson against Evander Holyfield from the looks of it. You've got a real dodgy try given at the corner. Uh, you, you, you felt like Toulouse were going to roll over and cave in at one point because they looked exhausted and yet they come back off the canvas and only ended up losing mm. to a Gareth O'Brien drop goal. And how important are his drop goals when they come to this time of year? Well, we've seen that in the qualifiers before, haven't we, Dave? And um, this was another weird one, full of controversy, wasn't it? The, the Jack Bussey incident, obviously we, we can only see the replays as well. It does look like he has took a chunk of uh, Bastien in his ear. It, it does look that way. And obviously the thing is, I thought, I thought it was Danish bacon, not French bacon. <laughs> you can tell... Did he get confused? You can, Do you reckon that? <laughs> are, are, we, are, we building, are we building in his, his defence here? I mean, to be fair to Toronto, they've obviously spotted something as well because mm. they've sent him straight home, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And uh, I think... You could, I think you could possibly tell by Adair's reaction as well as soon as it happened because he, he was he was straight up and he did retaliate. So you can, you can tell because he wasn't looking at, at Bussy when he when he did it. So obviously he couldn't have pretended. I don't think. Uh, but we'll see what comes of that. It's been I think it's been he's been charged with the grade F for biting. Oh, that's a long ban if he gets eight it, to ten. I think it is. Oh gosh, right. Um, eight to ten games. Um, but that's been referred to a tri tribunal, so we won't we won't find that out for a, a bit yet. So we'll we'll just have to see what comes of that. But fair play to Toronto; they have they've acted in a professional manner about it. Paul Rowley said after the game, then if it, if he has bitten him, then he'll he'll, he'll, de he'll have to, to to just deal with the punishments. If he's not, then then he can play for us. So. What did, you make of, that. what did you make of Toulouse though? Because I mean, as I said, the, the spirit in that camp it's, is tremendous, isn't it? But it just seems like we're saying every week, they're, they're great to watch, aren't they? Yeah. It's, they scored another fantastic try. Who, what was his name? Paul Macron? Macron. Macron. Macron, is it, yeah. Um, when he kicked it down the line, chased onto his own. I don't know how the yeah, ball... I don't, I don't know... I have not a clue how that ball just stayed in, in the field of play all the way down the line when he kicked it on. But when he when he did and he just burst onto it, he, that that's the type of rugby you want to see. Isn't it's it? like he had it on a string, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. It's, very, it's so exciting as well to 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 watch. But Toronto, yeah, they're a great side. They're on course for for Super League. I think they will get that third spot in the qualifiers. I think they will get. Oh, you reckon? Because I mean, they're two points behind everybody at the moment, aren't they? I think they'll creep up though. Because they, they, they've got witness in Toronto, <laughs> witness in Toronto, so I think they'll win that. And I can't remember who's the who's the other game. I've not looked that far in I, front I'm to be honest. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, viewers, listeners. We should be a little bit better prepared, <laughs> uh, but we only we only take it. You know what? We take it by that old rugby league mantra: a week at a time, don't a we? Week at a, time. a week at a time. They won't play tough. 
Oh, and it's going to be tough, tough challenge. Tough challenge. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're channeling your inner Wigan player again, aren't you? I can tell, Drew. Uh, right, OK, so that's your qualifier. So just to run through those results, Hull Kingston Row was 30, London Broncos 18, Leeds Rhino was 18, Salford Red Devils 16, Toronto Wolfpack 13, Toulouse Olympic 12, and Widnes Vikings 26, Halifax 12. What that does to the table, currently in the automatic promotion spots, uh, Salford, Leeds and Hull Kingston Rovers with two games left to go in the million pound game places at the moment it would be to lose going over to Toronto again which would give us a great game wouldn't it uh, however London Broncos are only point difference behind and there's only two points in point difference I'm talking it's that it's just a penalty goal between Toulouse and London for who gets in that uh, that run at the moment Widnes hoping for a minor miracle could they pull it off though with uh, two wins in the last two games? No chance. Oh, thanks. You've just done away all my drama that I was building up. Halifax, rock bottom, competitive, but ultimately finding themselves outgunned a lot in these eights. Um, right, I said we'd move on. And you've got a couple of things that you wanted to mention, haven't you, Drew? Yeah, well, this arrived in the post uh, a couple of days ago. It's Lou Campbell's BU Journal. And it's all about improving your mental state of mind, your, your mental health. It's just a journal, what you're jotting each day. There's, there's good points, bad points, and you just jot them down. You don't have to show it anyone. You, you just jot your feelings down. It, it improves your mental health. I can't wait to, to get a start on it. I'm going to start on it today, and I'm going to see how it develops over the coming weeks. I might even do a, a blog post right, to, to see how it is and give it a little bit of review. I spoke to Luke Campbell, I think it was about two months ago now mm -hmm. actually. Uh, I did two parts on loverubbyleague.com, you can check them out now, you just type in Luke Campbell, Life After League, part one and two, because uh, we did have a long chat, so we had, we had to put it in two parts. Obviously he's, he's part owner, well part founder, sorry, of uh, Andy's Man Club as well, which, mm -hmm. uh, which is the, the OK to talk symbol. It's, it's a brilliant uh, thing that he's doing at the moment. He actually decided to, to quit rugby league uh, well, pretty early in, in his career, I think it was uh, was he 20, 28? 28, I think, 28, yeah. And uh, and that's when he, he could have played for Ireland that World Cup year as well, so it was a big sacrifice for, for him to, to hang up his boots early, and uh, he's doing some great things with mental health at the moment, and he's, he's looking after people with the, 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 the likes of Andy's Man Club. Just talk us through this journal. How is it split up? Just out of interest. Well, it's it's split. It's 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 literally it's so simple, but it's it's so effective as well. So you open. There's just some inspirational quotes as well, and and what it is, you just, you you've got two or three pages a day. Today's goals, uh, your morning appreciations, your t today's affirm affirmation affirmations. Affirmations. That's it. I can't say it. We're going accents too strong, Dave. <laughs> what 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 could I have improved on today? What went well today? today Today's conclusion, and you just jot your feelings down. It's meant to improve your, your state of mind because you're offloading. You might not be offloading to other people. You might not want to, but you're offloading it in this book, and uh, it's it's meant to be great. And I, I've I've heard a lot of rave reviews uh, about it, and and uh, it's called the BU Journal by Lou Campbell. I think it's roughly uh, ten pounds to to buy, but it's a it's a thick thick book, and. Uh, I, I really can't wait to, to try it myself and uh, thanks to, to Luke Ambler for, for sending that to us at Love Rugby League. Uh, fantastic. I hope that you're also going to share your journey as well because mm -hmm. um, it would be good to sort of check back maybe in two or three weeks. I'm keeping a similar type of journal actually, believe oh, yeah. it or not. Yeah, which oh, okay. um, I, that's why I just wanted to check how that's set out because I've just set it out you know mm. today's goals what i'm doing uh my thoughts you know it's like it's like doing your own diary again it's like i feel like adrian mole all over again to be honest but um yeah uh, if, you, if you wouldn't mind drew i'd be really interested in bringing that back and i'm sure that there's something that our viewers will also uh, pick up for that mm. so but yeah great work that luke campbell is doing keep it up pal and uh we've been threatening haven't we to give these away <laughs> threatening. <laughs> threatening to give these lovely stadium hopper maps away over the last couple of weeks. I think, I think we need to go to a couple more new grounds, Dave, because uh, looking at this, it, it literally is the, the Northern powerhouse, isn't it? Because we, we've been to, we've hardly been anywhere down, down south, have we? Speak for yourself. Where have you been? I've, I've, I've been to France. Yeah, it scratched off that one, Dave. I've not scratched it off, though. <laughs> <laughs> This is Love Rugby League HQ. I've been to Trail Finders. 
Have you been to Penang Way? I've not been to Penang No, we had this conversation the other week, didn't we? I've not been to Penang Way. I've never been either. So anyway. I understand, but... Uh, well, yeah, we have picked a winner. Stephen Lightola is the winner of the competition. If you're watching this now, Stephen, please get in touch with us via the Facebook page or via the Twitter page and uh, we'll get it sent off to you as soon as you get in touch, really, and, and you can uh, enjoy. Hopefully uh, you're a bit of a ground-upper yourself, so hopefully you can, you can scratch a few of these off as soon as it arrives because uh, I think I need to get to, to more grounds as well. I can't, I've never been to Queensway Stadium Have you myself not? Oh, in, I like in it. North Wales. And it's nice, I'm, I like it. I'm hoping to go because wa Wales play Ireland in an international, don't we, uh, in the, this autumn at the Queensway Stadium. So I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to go to that, hopefully cover it for, for Love Rugby League and see where we go. Is that not being played in the other stadium at Wrexham? That, it's a full international, that, isn't it? Is that the one you're thinking of? Which one am I thinking of? I don't know. I thought it was at Queensway Stadium. No, they're actually going back to the main stadium, aren't they? And the, the we'll, we'll check it. I'm sure that I'm right. He likes to think that he's right every time. I'm sure it's Queensway. But I think I'm right. I think it's Queensway. Right, OK. Let's, let's move on before we have another full-scale little tiff. Uh, let's have a look at the results from the Betfred Super League Super 8 round 5 Castleford Tigers 44, Huddersfield Giants 12, couple of tries there for big junior Moors there's nothing junior about him is there it's huge, uh, I was over at St Helens on Friday night to see them lift the league leader's shield finally uh, they defeated Hull by 38 points to 12 Couple of really sparkling performances here. Uh, I they, thought that uh, they looked happy, didn't they, when they were lifting the shield? Or is it Astra? Oh, oh no, it's definitely the the league leader shield. Carry on, Dave. What do you mean they looked happy? You can't just leave it there. Well, just left that comment hanging. Well, if you compare what Cast did last year, their celebrations a bit. Looked a bit happier, didn't they, Eden? But everybody knows that it's the grand final that counts. Yeah, but you still get 100 grand as well. Still a chunk of Ben Barber's wages. Oh, did you see the little video involving him and the whole fans? What does that mean? Does that mean he's, he's, he signed a big deal somewhere else? All be revealed. Um, well, in fact, we, know, we already know, don't we, because everybody's saying it, but we're nobody saying it, if you know what I mean. Well, I think Valentine Holmes has said it. <laughs> Back on this game, though, we saw a 100% kicking performance from Danny Richardson, 7 from 7. Regan Grace scored two sparkling tries. The first one, he was like the bendy man going in at the corner. Somebody managed to twist and spin. Quick, isn't it? The second try, wow. They're why you want to go to rugby league. 70 metres, straight down that wing, outstripping the defence. Do you think he's the fastest player in Super League, do you think? I think he could lay a claim. I think they're, they're, we've got some quick players in Super League though, haven't yeah. we? I was also really impressed with Mark Percival. Even why, though why don't they have that race anymore? That 100 metre race? Maybe they will do. Maybe this didn't, is part of the... Didn't McIlvery win that when he was a lot younger and a lot leaner than what he is? What are you saying? You're not insulting another player, are no, you? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, I prefer me, I, no, because he's bulky <laughs> now, isn't he? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Don't worry, no, don't worry. He's trying to wind me up as usual. He's working. But is it, no, but he's, he's, he's bulky now, isn't he? But when he when was very lean, very young age, uh, he's, he's I think, I'm sure he won it. Oh, he's definitely won it. Well, he's very young, isn't he? But when he was young, very young age, um, I think I'm sure he won it. He won the, the 100 metre race. I have to admit, it was an event that kind of passed me by. I know they held it in Wigan a couple of times, didn't they? Did yeah. you, is this why you mentioned it? Did you get along to it or something? Yeah, I did. Did you? I, I, I went to one. Once, and I think it might have been McGilvery. I was, I was, but it's that, but it, time, hang but, on, but it's that oh, memorable. You can't remember who won it. <laughs> wonder if any Saints players will remember lifting League Leader Shield in a year time. Stop it, stop See, it, he's, stop it. He's <laughs> getting like this now just because <laughs> he went to the game on Friday. He wants me to shut up now. Yeah, Matt Percival, two tries, <laughs> and uh, he's, he's been in great form this year, hasn't he? Not as good as Thompson in the front row. Oh, Thompson. What a player he is. Yeah. I'll tell you what, there was twice when he split the defence, went through. First time he went 20 metres. Second time he went 60 metres. Massive, isn't he? Unbelievable. And, and, and sometimes when he just takes them carries and he just barges through, doesn't he? He barges through middle of defences and he goes on a 20, 20 30 metre roll. And he, you just imagine him coming at you, just 
It's, he just uh, defenders just bounce off him, don't they? They do. They, they literally just bounce off him. He's, I, I, I hope he plays for England at the end of the year. I think. I, I do. Think, yeah. I think he will. Obviously, he was, he was like 18th man, wasn't he, in Denver? So mm. he didn't. He didn't quite get the the chance. But he's been around the England squad now, and I, I hope he gets a, to to play a game or two against the Kiwis. Certainly against France in the warm up. I actually really enjoyed this game. I know that Hull haven't been in the greatest of form recently, but they were they were very competitive. They, they ended up going 10 0 behind early doors, and it looked like they were on for another real hammering. Spanking, yeah. Uh, but they kind of like got it back. It were 18 12 at half time, arguably. It could even have been closer than that. Uh, Saints scored with just a few seconds of the half remaining, like St. Helens tend to do. Um, second half was all St. Helens, however. And I know that um, Lee Radford was, wasn't a happy man afterwards. He was basically saying that um, his side has now got used to losing. That can't be a good thing. And it's not a good thing. When your coach is saying that. But fortunately, fortunately, he says that some of these guys are in for a big pre-season, so that suggests there's a couple of beastings on the way for that squad, doesn't it? Yeah, but just a a quick mention to to debutants for Saints, James Bentley and uh, 17-year-old Jack Wellsby. Yeah, he came on for the last sort of 10 minutes, did Wellsby. There's big things expected of him. Is he a player that you've seen on your travels I've, regarding I've academy rugby? I've not, because he's that young. <laughs> he's that young that I've actually not seen him play. I've, I've heard about him and I've, I've heard people speak of him. But I'm, I'm at the age where, where, I, where I like like to see like the likes of Matty Costello play, mm-hmm. Bill Older and, and Aaron Smith. And the, but he's actually... Young, too young for from from what I can remember of watching watching the academy, but I I have heard about him. Seventeen seven seventeen year old making your debut, and you get lift the league leader shield after it. He's got some uh, great raps, and that for only ten minutes work on the field as well. Yeah. So top stuff. But yeah, I think he is one of these uh, number of good young players that are starting to come through. And when you mention some of those other kids as well that are also in that St. Helen squad. It bodes well for the next few years, doesn't it? Matty Matt Costello nominated for Young Player of the Year in the Championship because he's obviously played a lot of the season with the uh, Sheffield Eagles on dual registration. He's a brilliant player. Him very he's, useful. He's, very he's, useful. He's, he's a full full back normally, but obviously he can fill in at centre. He can even play on the wing as well. So I think he'll be a, a regular for, for Saints in a couple of years. I'm wondering if he's the next Gary Connolly, you know, because it arguably he plays just as well in the centres. He was very yeah. effective in the centres. Well, oh, oh, I bet Saints are wishing. <laughs> Which is the next They'll be hoping ball. they can keep on to him and that they don't lose into Wigan, though. Well, yeah, I suppose that's the, the other thing regarding that. So, so yeah, so uh, well done to St. Helens, lifting that league leader shield, um, despite Drew saying they didn't look too happy. And I suppose it was a little bit muted because they all understand the importance of the grand final, I suppose. That's what we have now in Rugby League, isn't it? Um, Wakefield, they got a really good win against Catalan's Dragons. Uh, Johnston scoring a hat trick, and Ryan Hampshire. We're hearing that he's still not signed a deal for next season, um, and he's lighting the place up at the moment. He is. Uh, I think. It, I think it was in League Express where I read that they've not agreed terms yet. They're, they're hoping to agree terms, but obviously Wakefield have got a figure in mind, and but Hampshire and his agent have got another figure in mind, which is a bit above Wakefield's uh, offer on the table. So we'll just see what comes of that. It's interesting that it's now been kind of confirmed, Josh Drinkwater's confirmed himself that he will be leaving the Catalan's Dragons at the end of the season. I wonder where his destination is, because surely could somebody's drink, got to pick him up. Well, could Drinkwater go to Wakefield? Oh, Finn? right. Because Finn's obviously obviously staying on his backroom staff, but obviously he's moving on to Newcastle next year. So you'll have a half-back spot there, won't you? Depending on what Hampshire's doing as well. Who knows? Could, could we see John? I, I, th- I think... It, it, I think Drinkwater will stay in Super League. Mm-hmm. I don't think he'll go back to the NRL just yet. I can't, I can't see him getting an NRL deal just yet. I think he should stay in Super League, though. Um, and it, well, it, it all ties into what Jackson Hastings is doing as well. Because if Jackson Hastings goes back to Australia or, or he goes to a different club, we're gonna we're gonna link with him. Leeds are linked with him. So if he, if he moves to a different Super League club, then could Josh Drinkwater go to Salford for next season? So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there, Dave. Come back to your point about but, those but, Aussie but, halfbacks in a while. Um, but going back to, to the Wakefield game, that finish from Tom Johnston, that second try. He's been brilliant this year. Absolutely sensational. That that it was about five yards away from the line and just <laughs> just like leaped into the corner. It was a fantastic finish. Can can we say that famous line? He leapt like a salmon into the corner. There we go. 
favourite line on comms. <laughs> um, talking about guys as well that have made an impression, Don Manfredi hasn't played for nearly two years. Over two years. Over two years, is it? 762 days it was. It's a long time, isn't it? What a comeback. Two tries for him. Regulation win for Wigan against Warrington, wasn't it? Yeah, and, it kind of, and, and you kind of expected that t- that type of scoreline, if, if I'm honest, Dave, because Warrington, they rested Roberts, rested Hill, rested Kevin Brown, uh, rested Mike Cooper. So when, you, when you're resting your you, you starting front rowers, then you've got to be on the, the, the back foot. Great to see Don Manfredi come back. And I was kind of hoping that, that Don would score because it, it'd just be nice, wouldn't it? And, and when he scored that first try where he burst through uh, the, the Warrington defence, that's a typical Don Manfredi try. It was great to see him back. He celebrated with the fans. You could see what it meant on the celebrations. All the, the Wigan players ran up to him, jumped on him. Uh, it, it was great to see, really. It, it, it was a refreshing moment. And I think for any rugby league fan, you don't even have to be a Wigan fan. To, to just see how much it meant and it was a, it was like a nice feel good story kind of thing and it was uh, I spoke to him after the game as well and it was made up and uh, he said his his mum was in tears at, on the on the touchline watching it so it was a it was a nice uh, little story that so was that your moment of the week then I probably say so just for, just for the fact he's because, oh, t- two years out with injury <laughs> I, I can only assume what, how dark and testing it would have been for him because. Obviously, it was only meant to be out for a year with a with a knee injury, so it would have been hard then to f- going through rehab when all the other players are on on the field training and he's just stuck in the gym on his own doing rehab. It must be so hard. And then he thought he was coming back last year in a reserves game against Saints, did the exact same injury in that game, and then that put him out for another year, and he would have been through all the all the the same rigmarole again. Uh, so it was just great to see him back, and I, I probably would say it was was. The story of the week. Uh, I'd like my story of the week to be Jake Truman's performance for Castleford because I know we've sort of we almost brushed over that cast <laughs> running in forty-four points against Huddersfield. Who have been pretty good up until the last couple of weeks, haven't they? And to be fair, the scoreline probably flattered Castleford a bit because I think yeah, you're right. Huddersfield Udd- 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 were in that game for large large periods. Like Castleford just ran away a little bit towards the end, but for, for the first for, for the hour, I think. Huddersfield proved, proved good contenders in the game and I thought their middles, is it Matagai, I think that's how you, is that how you pronounce it, the, the new Samoan international signing, uh, he looks a, a great player for them and, and with the full pre-season behind, behind that forward pack I think they'll be, be damaging next year. Uh, so for, for me it was Jake Truman's performance because we've been crying out for a decent halfback in England, an English halfback for years. I mean, there's a, a there's a, an interview what, what, piece. What, what, what I <laughs> what I couldn't fathom out is when he picked up the loose ball, and instead of like pinning his ears back and going, he, he kind of like ran 20, 20 meters and he was just lo- looking around. Remember in the first half. You know what I think that was? It's because he wasn't sure of the pickup. I think uh, that he wasn't sure whether or not he knocked on. So when he realised he was getting away with it, he thought, I can't go the length because it will go and yeah. check it on a video referee, probably. So he thought, I'm just going to go down here. They can't then go back to it then, what can they? just running just run 95 metres? And Sensible. Stop, and then just stopping at line. <laughs> that <laughs> that would look a bit too much to just, that, wouldn't it? <laughs> just waiting 10 <laughs> seconds for all other players to come behind and just... Oh. Tackle that's like a rugby union sevens game that isn't it i'll just get it to the line come on it's your turn to score come and support me <laughs> so, <laughs> no i thought that was good i thought that was good going back to england he had a standout game his, his short kicking game is really impressive as well when it, when he does them little, little grubbers in towards the in goal area you know not many of the time they, they go out on the full and normally they, they stick in that in goal and and that's dangerous, that's what you want because you just want to power pressure on teams. I think it, it was one point, them short kicking games from Truman, I think they had about four or five <laughs> consecutive sets, Castleford, just because they kept getting dropouts from them little kicks and I thought it was very smart, it ties the opposition out as well. Uh, yeah, the reason that I mentioned Truman is that uh, there's an interview as well that's done with the great Alex Murphy in the Rugby League press this week and... 
The question to Alex was why have British halfbacks regularly failed on the international stage during the Super League era? And Alex have says we've got no halfbacks who can step up to that level. I can't name two world class halves in the British game. There's been none since the days of Schofield, Gregory and Edwards. That's a damning indictment, that isn't it? Do you think that he can maybe step up? Because I mean, you, you've been talking a lot about Australian halfbacks. That's why I wanted well, to mention well, it. I, th I think there are, there are good, good English halves, aren't there? Are they world class, though? Well, who would you class as world, world class? Who, well, who would you who would you put in that? You're you're talking about Jonathan Thurston. So you've got Jonathan Thurston. Well, okay, he's he's moving there's, on. There's no one. There's no one of Jonathan Thurston's calibre, and there's no one of. Maybe Sean, Sean Johnson's probably the, the second best, isn't he? Behind Thurston as halfbacks in the world, New Zealand Sean Johnson. But I think there is a lot of promise now for English halves. You've got, you've obviously got Danny Richardson as well as Truman. You've got George Williams, who's who's still only 22, I think. I still believe he's a hooker. I don't, I don't think he is. I know we've had this conversation. I don't think we? he is, but. Um, <laughs> You think Sam Powell's an halfback? I do. Yeah. And I think he's an eye. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we've got different views. Uh, but you've got th three very young, talented halfbacks there, and you've got Callum McClellan, that, who's just gone to Leeds. Hang on! Don't go pouring real pressure on him. He's only just come back from rugby union, that kid. Yeah, but we're we're talking about promising halves, and I think he is a promising player. There's no no doubt, doubt in it. But I think. Yeah, well, would you not class Sean Long as world class? No. Um, I'll be honest, I never really liked Sean Long as a halfback. I thought he was too much of an individual player. Had some great games, great seasons, good club man, fantastic. The job uh, that he did at St. Helens. Oh, it's, it's some, it's some stuff he used to do was silky. I, I used to like him. Um, but I've, I've, I think the future of the English halves are uh, looking well. Right, really okay, do. okay. We'll see what Alex has to say about that at some point, shall we? The great Murph, the great Murph. Right, let's run through well, a roundup. To be fair, when you compare him with Schofield and, and Edwards, well, it was a different time, wasn't it? It was. A it was. It was. It was, was. A different time and a much positive, to, much more positive time. Uh, so the uh, roundup of the results: Cast Tigers forty-four, Huddersfield Giants twelve, St Helens thirty-eight, Hull FC twelve, Wakefield Trinity thirty-four, Catalans Dragons twenty-two, and Wigan Warriors twenty-six. Warrington Wolves six. Moving on to the Betfred Championship Shield and a resounding victory for Barrow against Swinton. Couple of tries there for Ryan Burrows. Couple of tries there uh, as well for Carter, who's played for Scotland in his time. Brett Carter and uh, Dally Moore kicking five from six goals. Swinton themselves, though, still have this massive chance, don't they, yeah. given this yeah. uh, almost reprieve which was announced on Friday. And they have got some strike. I mean, Mike Butt obviously seems to be there thereabouts with their tries, and uh, you, you add in the George Tyson as well. So they have got a little bit of a little bit of strike, haven't they? They have, and I, I, think, I, I don't know what are Swinton lacking, because they always seem to have not a problem with scoring points. It's mm. just that it must, it must be the defence. I mean, this one, I mean, it was. Sure, it surely got to be the defence. It was really close at half time because it was 12 14, actually in Swinton's favour, so they, they, they keeled over in the second half by mm. the looks. Uh, Do you think it's a fitness thing? No, maybe? I don't know. I don't know because, I mean, I know that Stuart Little is a hard taskmaster. Congrats, um, congratulations to him on getting the, the Ireland job as well. What a fantastic result that is, him getting the Ireland job. And, you know, knowing Stu. Simon, Simon Wolford was. He was. he was expected to get it. Knowing Stu like I do as well, um, he'll do a great job. He will do a great job, and I, I'm really pleased for you. Really pleased for you. Um, Batley Bulldogs 44, Sheffield Eagles 4. This season couldn't end up quick enough for Sheffield. Nice to see that they're getting a couple of their old players back, though. I noticed James Davey has been announced for next season. He was dynamic when they were up winning championships. And John Magrin. Jamaica and Malta International, he'll be going back to, to the Bradford Bulls next year. Yeah, he's a, he's another one that's come through London Rugby, because he started off at the Broncos, didn't he? So. Big player, him. Oh, he is. Huge front row. Uh, the story of that Batley game was a hat-trick from Johnny Campbell. Um, Just signed a deal, hasn't he? He has, Basically yeah. He's signed a deal, an extension for next season. He's been unlucky with injuries, hasn't he, this year, Johnny Campbell? He's, he's, he's only had a, a, about 10, 12 appearances. For the last couple of years, really, because yeah. even when he went to, to Bradford, he didn't feature that many but, times but, for them. But the last couple of weeks, he's, he's been scoring. Mm. I think he's got, he's got about five, six tries in the last three games, so he's been, he's been flying at the moment. And fair, fair play, and I, I like Batley, he's a club, good club. 
they are really good club and actually I thought that the uh, chairman uh, spoke a lot of sense last week when when there was all uh, what shall we say counter argument and counter argument and press conference and all the other things that came ahead of the big structure debate um, I thought he was a shining light of sensible talk actually well, he, he, yeah, but he did say, did he say something as though Rochdale were being bullied by Warrington? He suggested it. Well, he suggested it, and then Rochdale came out and said they weren't. But again, we're drifting into structure, so we'll come to that in a couple of minutes. Let me get through know. this. Let me get oh, through I, this. I just get mixed up with it all. <laughs> you and me both, I think, to be honest. Uh, for Featherstone Rovers, they defeated Dewsbury Rounds by 40 points to 28. couple of tries there for Connor Farrell, nice to see him uh, again sort of getting on the field on a more regular basis for Featherstone and a massive return for Martin Ridyard who not only ended up with 10 points to his name for Featherstone Rovers, he's now past 2,000 in his career in professional rugby. Great stuff, I, 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 I really like Martin Ridyard, I think he's a super player, great bloke as well isn't he, very down to earth, he was great, great at Lee, uh, I, I really really rated him at Lee. It was a shame that he, could, he couldn't stick out at Lee for the, for, for the remainder of his career, really, and be a one club man. But he, 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 he was great for Featherstone at the start of the season, then he picked up the injury. But then he even filled in at fullback yesterday, uh, on Sunday. Or well, even filled in at fullback, Martin Ridgeard. I've, I've never seen that before in my life, but uh, fair play to, to Riddy. It's good, it's good to see him back on the field, isn't it? Especially helping Featherstone, who, who, who have been lacking plays in recent weeks. Uh, now here we can have a, a quick word about Rochdale Hornets because they shrugged off any accusations of them being bullied by putting in a, a really good performance against Lee Centurions. The fact that it was 16 all at half time, the fact that they led 12 points to nil early on in that game. Very tough and gritty, wasn't it? Suggests that they still got a story to be told about their season as well, doesn't it? I don't know. I, I, I think if if they do get, well, it is looking like they are going to to be relegated, isn't it, for for Rochdale? Well, year. you said this. There's well, a playoff, which yeah, we'll touch is. on in the structure debate. But uh, <laughs> well, if, if they do get relegated, I think I think they'll be a very solid team in in League One Rochdale. They, they've got some good players, and obviously they get they get a handful of players from from Warrington uh, each week as well, uh, and I think it was it was it Toby Adam Adamson got got Simbin for fighting with. Kevin Leroy uh, in in the second half. There was a couple of cars being shown in in that game as well, and I think they did well. Like Lee, Lee, Lee are a solid team, aren't they? Like I, I know they've lost a lot of players in recent months, a lot of the the higher end players. But if you're still look, looking at that Lee team on paper, it's still still pretty strong, isn't it? Good to see the likes of Sam Pete as well, a local lad, uh, getting another run out in the in the Centurions colours. OK, so to run through those results, Barrow Raiders 34, Swinton Lions 18, Batley Bulldogs 44, Sheffield Eagles 4, Featherstone Rovers 40, Dewsbury Rams 28 and Rochdale Hornets 16, Lee Centurions 24. Finally, in League One, the round up there sees Hemel Stags getting defeated 56-6 by York City Knights, Hattrick the for Cocaine, uh, two tries there for Marsh as well, who's spent much of the season there from Hull Kingston Rovers. Eight out of ten goals kicked by uh, Connor Robinson, who also added a try as well. Hunslet, ten, Newcastle Thunder, 46. The standout here was that man Marginé, two tries, seven goals. Pointer also coming in with a couple of really decent efforts as well. Um, the big game I was at at the weekend uh, on the Our League app was North Wales Crusaders and Doncaster. That had Doncaster being a little bit too strong in the end for North Wales Crusaders. My first time seeing Jason Tarley play, who was on 20 tries before the start of the game. 22 tries he's got now. Uh, scored two during that game. Performance from him? Um, I didn't think it was, to be honest. I would have thought it would have come from the bench because they had a couple of really good forwards. Uh, Ross Osborne, who got released at Hull mid-season, was a big influence. And Connor Scott, of course, who spent all of his career in South Yorkshire playing for Sheffield and Doncaster. He was a massive influence as well when he came on off the bench. Really did settle them down because North Wales Crusaders during the opening 20-25 minutes, you couldn't tell that they were ah, where they were on the table. Um, you know, I thought they were really good, but Doncaster eventually prevailing by 36 points to 12. The highlight of the game for me, Aaron Jones-Bishop, 
Yes, that's brother of Ben Jones Bishop, who's at Wakefield these days. He's as quick as his brother. There was a loose pass out to the wing. Aaron Jones Bishop pounces on it, and he's gone. He'd still be running if it weren't for the fact that there was the end of the pitch. It was a brilliant run, scintillating speed, under the post, 90 metres. Check it out when they put the highlights on. Oh, well done. Um, moving on, Oldham 16, Bradford Bulls 24. Oldham really giving Bradford some stick in that one, didn't they? Well, Oldham are a tough side. I've, I've said it time and time again. Oldham are a very, very stern and rough and ready side, aren't they? And uh, Ben Davis got uh, sent off, didn't he, for... For questioning the referee, uh, not was it sent off or Simbin? Sent off. Sent off, yeah, for for questioning uh, the the referee's decision. Um, so obviously that didn't help Oldham in any anywhere. Okay, uh, West Wales Raiders only had twelve men, uh, and as a result went down one hundred and twelve points to six at home to Keithley Cougars. It was bit your hat trick time. There was four hat tricks scored in that game, and Hardcastle, the kicker, scored a try kick, fourteen goals as well. So they just had a field day. Uh, Whitehaven twenty four, Coventry Burst twenty. Let's have a second big mention just here for quick, Coventry. Just, just touching on West Wales, didn't they only have twelve players? I just mentioned that. No, did you? I'm dead, David. I not listening. I can't tw- believe it. Only, only had twelve players. Only twelve players. Should, should you be able to play a game with twelve players? Well, it's happened now. Yeah, but should, uh, what's the point? I've seen games played with 12 players before. Well, we're on about semi-professional ranks here. Shocking, isn't it? It is shocking. Isn't it? Uh, and this, this ain't a jib at West Wales. I'm not, cause I hope it works for them. I really do hope it works for, for West Wales. They've got a new coach coming in next season. All the very best. But sh- we're, we always hear of this player welfare, don't we? We always hear, let's look after our players. Oh, but 12 players. Not even, it's 13 a side. You've not even got any subs. What's the point? If, you, if, you, if you've not got enough players to, to feel the team, you, you should have four for the game. Because it's not fair on the, the 12 players who are playing. Because they could, they could get seriously injured. They, they could be running around and running around and burning themselves to the ground. Because because there's 12 players against maybe possibly 17 players. Well, it was 17 well, yeah, players. There yeah. you go. Um, it's a fair point. It's a fair point that Drew makes here. What, five, five extra players. What do you reckon? What do you reckon? Comment, share, do whatever you want. Let us know. Let us know. Um, yeah, back on this. Whitehaven, uh, the player coach scored a hat trick. Great to see. Yeah. Big prop forward as well. Yeah. Always like a prop scoring a hat trick. I do. They don't happen very often. And then Workington Town had a. Uh, I would. I was going to say, not all their own way against London Scholars. The final score was thirty-eight points to six at half time. It was fourteen nil though. So that suggests that they chucked their all in. Yeah, it, it was the second half what blew the scores away, wasn't it? Uh, was it Fu Fu Moimai getting over for one? Scott Rowe also getting over for was it for two? Two tries, tries yeah. And it, Ollie Wilkes it's a, scoring. It's a, it's a nice story, isn't it, for for Scott Rowe, because uh, he got he got that serious injury, didn't he, earlier on in the in the season where he was he was in hospital, wasn't he, for was it for one or two weeks, I think, after taking a head knock. So it's good to see him back out there and and scoring for for Town. Okay, so what that means currently in all those tables? Well, we knew that Featherstone Rovers and Lee Centurions are going to be fighting out the the Championship Shield final. We've known that since week one of this section of the season. Um, in Super League, the top four isn't going to change. I think Warrington have decided that they want to go to St. Helens. They don't want to challenge now. Um, and they'll let uh, Castleford Tigers go to Wigan. Very interesting thinking, isn't it, from, from Warrington? Because mm. it, does, it does seem as though they want to go to Saints. It's all happening in League One because you've got Bradford have already tied up the spot. They're still chasing York. York need a result next week. Uh, Doncaster have secured that third spot. Workington Town just beneath them and Whitehaven currently in the front seat as far as those go ahead of this weekend's fixtures Um, Rochdale sitting in bottom spot in the Championship Shield which becomes very important now because of the big decision that they came up with that they wouldn't be relegating to they'd have a playoff for the losers of the Betfred League 1 
playoff final to play against Rochdale Hornets for who takes that third spot in the championship next season an expanded championship to 14 teams which we'll talk about in a minute the results are odd. so that's the results that's where everything sits the fixtures so in Betfred Super League Super 8 Huddersfield Giants against Wigan Wigan Castleford Tigers against Wakefield that's on Friday Castleford, but I think Wakey will make it tough for him. And I think I think that is is that game like the fifth time they've played each other this season as well. I've lost count. I'm getting bored now. I'm sure I've seen it a <laughs> few times. Um, Hull FC against Catalans Dragons. Who wants to win that one? <laughs> That's I, on Saturday. Right, I'm, go I'm going. Hull FC, they've got to bounce back so sooner or later, aren't they? I'm going Hull FC. Warrington Wolves against St Helens. That's on Saturday as well. Be going for that. Go, go into that one. I'll be covering that for low rugby league. Uh, mm. It's going to be it's, because I think I think both both teams will rest players, won't they? So it's it's going to be interesting to whichever team rests more players. <laughs> I think. But I'm going with who are the home team? Warrington. Um, I'll I'll go with Saints. I'll go with Saints. Qualifiers. The Super Eights. Toronto against Widnes. Toronto. These are on Saturday, by the way. Uh, Toronto, possibly by 20. So bit much of a margin. Mm. Toulouse Olympique against Hull Kingston Rovers. Hull KR having to travel to the south of France in this one on Saturday. I'm going to go Hull KR. I just think it'll be a bit too strong for... Narrowly. For Toulouse, yeah. I think, mm. I think narrowly, less than 10 points, I think. Uh, also now on Saturday which has caused a whole different debate in itself London Broncos at home to Salford fixture change fixture change Claxon fixture change five days to go <sighs> why do we do it why do we do it it's confu it confuses me it, there's obviously no thought that has gone into the fans that who have booked the travel. There's people that might be going on the trains. They might have booked overnight stops beforehand. Just typical RL, isn't it? It is typical rugby league. You you, you won't get this in football. I don't, I, I don't know why we shouldn't compare it to football, but, but you won't get it in any other sport at all. You wouldn't. Five days notice. Five days. Less than a week's notice for a fixing change, but... Let's stop mourning about it because it's done now. Right? So we'll be playing on Saturday. I'll go for London. Oh, what's the shock? You're expecting Danny Ward's boys to do it? But it's, it's no one ever in it for London, really. You nearly burst into song then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only qualifiers game on Sunday, Halifax against Leeds Rhinos. We heard bit of a derby. Yeah, we heard Richard Marshall talk about it being the first time Halifax have played Leeds in God knows how many years. Mm, I, I do think Leeds will be too strong, but I think Halifax. I think this this will be the game that Halifax are up for more than anything in these qualifiers, just because it's the the fact that it's so local. Okay. It's uh, it's all the all the. Some of, some of the Halifax players will be Leeds, Leeds lads, so it's going to be interesting. I think Fax will give it a go, they'll try and rough Leeds up a, a little bit through the middle, but I think Leeds will be, be winners in that one. This will never catch on because all the games in the Championship Shield taking place on Sunday. Uh, Lee at home to Batley. Lee. Rochdale at home to Dewsbury. Oh, this could be a cracker. Mm. Dewsbury. Sheffield at home to Barra. Barra, Barra, yeah. and Swinton at home to Featherstone Rovers. That could be, that could be a very good game to watch. Featherstone by twenty. Because well, if, if Featherstone haven't got seventeen players and Swinton out, and Swinton obviously the the home side, I'm just going for Featherstone by twelve. They won forty six four in the league. Different team then. And Swinton, Swinton need to fight now. Swinton need to fight to get out. Feathers are already in final. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Okay. Swinton, Swinton are, are fighting. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. On Saturday in Betfred League One, we've got Coventry Burrs against Hunslet. Hunslet. London Scholars at home to Oldham. 
Oldham. And on Sunday, we've got Bradford against Hemel. Bradford. Doncaster against Workington, which you'll be able to catch on the Owl League app. Doncaster. Keithley Cougars at home to North Wales Crusaders. Ooh. I'm going Keithley just because of the home advantage. Newcastle Thunder against West Wales. Newcastle. And York City Knights against Whitehaven. Arguably, this is York City Knights. Oh, I was gonna. Yeah, I was building it up then. <laughs> you just well, did. You just did what I did with the Featherstone. Yeah. Ah, Featherstone for that man. Well, you, you, you York City Knights. If York win, they, they get the title and they get the own promotion, don't they? You so, do. So I think I think York. Even okay. though Whitehaven are a decent side, I think York will be very mentally prepared. I think, I think they'll go out and blow, blow them away, I think. So, that's your fixtures. That's what Drew thinks. You've heard our thoughts on those. Right, let's get down to it. Structure. Du, 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 du. Right. Du, du, I, had to do, I had to do various graphics here so that I could understand it to myself. So... Go on, it has now, explain it. It has now been decided. Following the meeting, 68% voted in favour that the structure in Super League will see a 12-team Super League, a return of a top-five playoff, the bottom team getting relegated to the Championship, and 29-game season, including Magic Weekend and loop fixtures. Yeah. Uh, I like the top five playoff, for starters. Well, that's that's uh, a good the, thing. The first thing that I will, say, I will comment is that that's the structure now. That's it for 2019, but let's stick with it. We don't know whether it's going to be the structure for 2020. <laughs> please, please, let's stick with it. Because <laughs> I, ca I, I can't go through <laughs> and writing down structures just to understand it. I, we, we work in rugby league media, Dave, and we're we can we we're getting our heads around it, aren't we? Yeah. Like it's, it's, it takes a while. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. For me, it takes, I don't know if that's just because it's me. This is why I wrote it down, though. But it ta it, it takes a while. And for the average rugby league fan, the, the person who's not obsessed with it but who likes going to the games and stuff, they're like, "What's going on? They've changed again." No. But the, it will be a massive, massive, massive shot in the foot if we change it again for 2020 if we if we have that for a year and we change it again for 2020 if we can't have that but the only thing that worries me is the fact that all these people in the greater good and in the know they all told us this current structure that we're playing to was the one that had sought the ills out of the game and it's not done yeah it's not uh, but but i think it i think the eights, the the super eights and the qualifiers, I think that were a big risk anyway to take. I think I think that were a massive risk, to be honest. Because I think it's it's such a risk to because four Super League teams could go down in a year and four championship teams could come up and there could be a lot of financial difficulties involved there. And we've obviously learned in the last few days that Witness will get the five hundred K parachute payment next year if the likelihood happens that they they've said they said if more than one Super League yeah. club, they'll get guaranteed five hundred yeah. grand as well. Yeah, aren't if, they? If, if, if more than one go down, it just looks like witness at the moment uh, being replaced by Toronto. But we'll soon we'll soon see about that. We're on to the structure. I think the top five is a good thing. I think one one thing it does do because I mean we started off and we, we were like anybody else. We've started off this show and we've gone straight for the qualifiers because that's what counts. That's and ev exciting. everybody's that's already sorted with where they at in the uh, Super Eights. Right. Well, well. So for for example, just looking at at the table, Dave. Look at the bottom three: the Catalans, Hull FC, and uh, Huddersfield Giants. Obviously, Huddersfield Giants had that little little two or three game spell where they had a, a glimmer, a glimmer of hope of getting in the top four, but it was it was nothing more than a glimmer, was it? Everyone expected Warrington to remain in that four. So apart from that, what, what have the Super 8s done this year? Nothing. You bring that top five play in, play off the win for, for next season and compare it with what we've got this year. For what a clash we've got between them two clubs, Wakefield and Huddersfield. They would yeah, be pushing, yeah. wouldn't they, for that fifth spot? Well, exactly, and, that, and that's what will make it very exciting. If you, without sounding too disheartening on the sport, for the top five next year, you'll, you, you'll guess that top four will make that top five, what the top four is now. So it's just out of like the Huddersfield, the Wakefield. Well, obviously Hull will be, probably be a, a different side next year. Salford potentially 
Could be a, a top, maybe maybe edging for that fifth spot next year. Hashtag Jackson Hastings. Hashtag. <laughs> hashtag <laughs> keep Hastings. But um, I, I, I like the top five. Scrap the the top eight because obviously it, it was too big of a goal, wasn't it, for for some of the clubs, especially Catalans who, who were going on the Challenge Cup run. Scrap the that that top eight. Uh, keeping it with the uh, twelve teams. Personally, I would have gone more, but I'm not too fussed whether it, it changed from 12 teams or not. Personally, I would have, I would have gone uh, and put more teams in, but I'm not too fussed about that. OK. Uh, the Championship next season will be expanded to 14 teams. So I think I've already touched upon how this is going to happen, but you have, uh, or, or you will have, 11 sides will have secured their place by two weeks' time. Uh, so this is where there's a great focus on Swinton and Rochdale now to see whether they can outdo each other over these last couple of weeks of the season. Um, coming up from Betfred League One will be the champions, will be the winners of the playoff, and just for good measure, we've chucked in another playoff final between the team that finishes bottom of the Championship Shield and the loser of the playoff final in Division One. Does that make it any simpler? Now I've explained it again. It does. <laughs> Have you got your head yeah, around it yeah, now? Yeah, it does. Uh, I, 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 hope, I hope people who are watching this, Dave, yeah. uh, can understand it. But and that's just before next season. Next season, it's a 14-team championship. It's a top five playoff um, simulating what's going on in Super League. So everybody's the same. If you It's fourth against fifth in an elimination game. Second against third in a qualifying game. The winner of that qualifying game goes on to play the top of the league. Uh, loser of that game plays the winner of the elimination game. I'm already talking myself into confusion here, so I'm going to shut up now. But it's the same. You, you've got to understand it's the same. I was just on a round about it. I was just going in circles, Dave. <laughs> One thing that has been decided as well is that lost. two teams are getting relegated from the championship next season. So whoever's in 13th and 14th spot, they're going straight down. And, that, and if that was this season, that would have been obviously Swinton and uh, Rochdale. Uh, moving on to League One. Oh, I didn't mention, they're having 27 games, including a summer bash. So we've got the Magic Weekend stopping in Super League. We've got the summer bash stopping in the Championship. Hopefully Magic Weekend moves away from Newcastle next year. Hopefully. I thought everybody liked it in Newcastle. Well, it's baffling because the tenants are dwindling for the last four years there, but... May as well just keep it in Newcastle because people aren't like Newcastle. Where would you have it then? Uh, at Etihad. Not really expanded the game there though, are we? <laughs> how, many, how many juries did you hear in St James's Park for Magic Weekend? There was loads. They were dressed. I saw them in the crowd. Or were they Witness fans? <laughs> I think they were. They must have been Witness fans, really, mustn't they? <laughs> but but I, I, I would like to know how many. How many Jordies, well, Newcastle fans or Sunderland fans, do, do you know what I mean? How many people from Newcastle actually went to Magic Weekend? That's one that you can tell us about, dear watchers, because do hashtag Jordies in Newcastle and let us know. Let us know how many you spotted. And obviously, I know they have that Friday Night Lights, the Newcastle Thunder, where they, they obviously they had Bradford this year. What we're going to have? We're going to have Salford playing then on the Friday night instead if it goes back to Manchester. Well, well, why not? Why not encourage other people to go and watch Salford to, to boost their attendance? Do you not think? If, they, if, they, if, they only, if they're only getting, is it maybe two and a half thousand, three thousand uh, home attendances on average, why, why not? Why not encourage the, the likes of the, the Yorkshire? The Yorkshire teams are the teams from Hull. Will you stop it? You've gone back to Super League again. Yeah. Stop it's, it's it. It's Magic Weekend, Super it's League. It's only because that was only a thing. I was only mentioning that it's taking place again next week. And we get two minutes. So. It's all right. We, we can't talk about Super League with Mr Championship here. And do you mind? It's League One. That's taking focus now. League One, there's 12 teams in it next well, season. What, what are you doing on Sunday, Dave? You may as well mention it. Uh, well, I'm over at Doncaster again. Doing what? For the hour league app. <laughs> Doing a commentary in League One. Get yourself signed up. Membership.rugbyleague.com Pick your club. Pick a championship club. And ultimately, they might actually earn something from that deal. Maybe so. Could be worthwhile. Let me finish now. Can I get it? I'm going back to League One. Go on. Go on. 12 teams. 22 games. 
no hint of a magic weekend or a summer bash type event for these guys. The top team gets promoted to the championship, places two to six, will then play off to decide the second promoted team. And this is in a five team playoff mould, similar, or I should say exactly the same, yeah. to in Super League to within Championship. Um, but we've still got a different structure, if you like, between all three divisions, haven't we? <laughs> We've got one one getting relegated from Super League, yeah. two getting relegated from the Championship, um, one automatic from League One, one via a playoff. Yeah, there's still going to be some playoffs for all you guys that love playoff rugby. I just I, I don't want another structure change. <laughs> it's killing me off there. Uh, right, oh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, to be fair, I I don't mind. I think it's a, a decent structure that. For, for all three leagues, I think, because it gives all all teams a chance to to obviously better themselves and go higher, doesn't it? Or and it and, it's, and it makes it more exact. Well, we'll soon find out. But I think from looking at it and from hearing it, that it makes it more exciting the back end of the season for all mm -hmm. three all three leagues. Uh, I want to go on to some of your tweets and thank you very much for these messages that you've sent in. Um, so, Mark hits in with the big one straight away. He said, this looks like it's ignoring fans again. Uh, why, he, he, why would, he, think that? he would have liked to have seen 12 teams, a top four playoff that you can easily explain, and two relegated. Or a 14-team division, a top six playoff, and uh, two relegated. But everybody just playing each other home and away. But why is it ignoring fans? To ask Mark that. Well, I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure if it's ignoring fans because I'm not. Obviously, all, all, everyone's different. Like I, I wanted a different structure, structure to you when when I suggested it, Dave, and and obviously James is is different to us, and other people are different. So I don't think it's it's. I don't think you can really say that it's it's ignoring fans' view because one fans' view is an, is different to another fans' view. So, I, but I, I see what Mark's saying about the structure because I think we are. <laughs> We all had our own ideas. I said 16 teams Super League, and you said uh, two teams of 10, didn't you, originally? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was. So I was. I was looking at two tens. So it's, yeah. ve it's very different, isn't it? But I can see what Mark's saying with, with the structure. The top six playoff was like what it used to be, wasn't it? Well, it was in for a few years, wasn't it? Well, few years. <laughs> yeah. um, these guys are worth following on Twitter. So it's at TLCRF80Mins. Uh, oh, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. now that is the uh, the Rochdale Hornets fan site, uh, which they have some great write ups and a good little bit of video content as well that you can look at how they they go on when they're going away from home and that type of stuff. I really like that site. The guys behind it are great. Um, that's these lads can run for eighty minutes. That's what it stands for. And he just adds more horrendous pressure for Rochdale and Swinton and it is isn't True. it <laughs> heading yeah. into these last few yeah. weeks of the season it's, yeah it's, it's going to be very tight very very tense as well because if, <laughs> just imagine the, like the, the the players for Swinton and Rochdale obviously finishing finishing the jobs at five six o'clock with training and then just thinking oh what what is in store for the, this next month or so and the fact is that with this what is in store with this second we well we don't really know do we with this second playoff final if you like yeah. that's going to take place teams are finished teams are generally finished I bet there's some of these players that have got an holiday well th that was another thing with the short chain I've seen a couple of tweets I can't I can't re there was a player who tweeted something like our RFL going to go going to refund me for my holiday would have already booked because of this this new structure I can't remember who it is well we don't want to get him yeah, in trouble do we yeah, so yeah, that's, well, that's, yeah, that's yeah, another thing as well yeah but it's a, it was a player in in in, uh, in League One or a championship and uh, it's, it's interesting but there's, there's not much you can do at all Marco approaches it from a slightly different angle he says get rid of Thursday nights uh, there's no thought from the fixture programmers. Away tendencies have dropped. Away tendencies. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't agree with that. We were clubs that clubs think clubs are relying on away fans. I think that's pretty poor, to be honest. 
No, but I think he, he's also saying as well the fact that he can't get to as many games because oh, yeah, they're on yeah, Thursday yeah. nights. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. Yeah. I, 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 I figure, and this is something that we don't do very often in rugby league. We don't listen to our own consumers. Has anybody actually asked the fans what they want in all of this thing? Maybe this is what the point is, and this is why I've got some really good tweets because I've actually gone out and said, "What would you say about it?" Yeah, and we, we are. Did we have this discussion a little bit last week about Thursday games? That Sky keep rugby league going in this country, doesn't it? Like Sky Sports, whatever you think of them, whatever you might not like the the way they present it or anything like that, but they pump money into rugby league, and without Sky at this moment in time, for over the last years of Sky covering RL, I really don't know where where the sport would be, and they. If they want Thursday games, they ha- they have to have Thursday games. They, if they, if they can't they can't say well we we'll, we want Thursday games and then then we turn around and say no we we're just playing it on Fridays and su- Sundays. We've got to do we've kind of got to do what they want because they they put so much money into the sport every single year. They is it forty million they put in something like that. Well, we know that now because of some. Sheets which were put out last oh, week, yeah. but we also we also about, about four, forty million. We it? also know as well that maybe they could even get away with offering thirty million next time, and then they wouldn't have to fund any of these championship clubs. Well, uh, we've got to see. Why have we done that? That is just stupid. That I, I don't understand why that came out into the public domain. No, it's not. It's, well, why? Did, it's another thing. Why do we have all these statements? Uh, in the week building up to the EGM, just let the EGM happen and report what happens after that. I was always, I tell you what, if I'd read another statement which said, can we draw a line under this, and it's another line in the sand, I was going nuts at the end of last week. Honestly, these press releases were coming through and coming through, I was like, just reading them and just thinking, why? Why do we continually do this to ourselves? I'll just read through some of these other, because I really want to get these these sort of in. Um, I had a really interesting uh, Twitter debate, I think it was, on Thursday night with uh, Matt and Dan just regarding this whole thing. So thanks, guys, for joining in on that one. Uh, I was, like, saying how there's various things that Rugby League now needs to concentrate on. Participation, crowd numbers, making the sport more viable so that it doesn't rely as much on TV income. Now, I know that... Don't get me wrong, I know that's, you know, TV is key and the money that that provides, it it means that everybody can survive, doesn't it? And and hopefully, uh, if we're led to believe, going to thrive in the future. Uh, And Matt questioned saying, what sport isn't dependent on TV money? Um, He said as well that Super League needs to create that drop-down effect that the Premier League has so that the rest of the game can benefit. Uh, Dan suggested there was borderline skirmongering going on from the Championship clubs. Uh, I love that word. And Matt also suggested as well that it was a case of the tail wagging the dog uh, with regards to the Championship clubs. Um, John had a different view. John said the TV deal, uh, regarding the TV deal, we need to protect clubs like Whitehaven, Workington and Oldham. If it dies there, Rugby League dies. Does it though? I'm not sure. <sighs> Does it? Uh, Matt also added... If, if you, just, just touching on Oldham, and I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't mean to pick on Oldham because I wish, I wish Rugby League was as popular as Oldham as it were in the 90s. Don't get me wrong. But what do all them average now? Three fifty, I don't get. It. I had a thousand at the weekend. In Bradford, though. So normally they have about four, say four hundred, average. What the workings in have six hundred average. Does it? Does the does rugby league die if they die? Does in those communities? In, in them communities. They're part of the. You know, this yeah, is but, why but, but they're part of it. You, you, you're just saying working to the started off in Super League. Yeah, they have. Look at the that, history they've had. Got. But they're they're close. All them were in Super League. Yeah, they are. But, but they're close to death now. Anyway, do you know? What? I know, I'm not because I, 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 I'm one of them who wants Cumbria to thrive in rugby league. I want it to happen. I want this to be a Super League team in Cumbria. But I genuinely believe, and no one's gonna. Gonna like what I'm gonna say, but they need to merge to to keep. No, we don't need to merge. Okay, then. We'll no, we don't we'll need to get, merge. We'll just have two League One clubs then in in Cumbria, and we won't have a Super League team because that. that y- but hey, but what what what? But you're talking you're talking that film with Kevin Costner. Build it, and they will come. 
half of the issues of the game is the fact that it's not always putting its best foot forward, is it? I, I, I think so I think those communities can oh. still thrive. How, how can they? How, if, if you were, so you're saying that one, of them, one of them clubs could be in Super League? No, I'm not saying that, because you become the best of what you can be. And at the moment, none of those places that we've talked about, none of those clubs are Super League standard. But it doesn't mean that they can't actually reach that at some point. Yeah, but they need, they need heavy investment. Where are they going to get the heavy, heavy investment from? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Like, go knocking around on billionaires' <laughs> doors. I don't know. I don't. Well, you're asking me. I don't know. I've not got the answer to that. But, but well, that, that, that's what I was saying. But I, do, I, do, I, I can sympathise with it with the comment to, to a certain extent where where it dies. I do know and John's I, a Salford fan, by the way. Well, well, I do retract what I said about if all them die, then rugby league doesn't die. Doesn't die because it. Uh, it will be a big, big loss to the sport, and it'd be a big loss for for Cumbria if, if they go down as well. Well, if they go down the similar route, but I, there's not much. What, what can you? What, what can you do? You can't. You can't just keep giving mo- giving money to these clubs and they do nothing with it. All they do is is pay. Yeah, but pay. what what have some Super League clubs done to it? How yeah, are, are Wakefield yeah, still playing in that, in that yeah, stadium, for yeah, example? Yeah, no, I you know, completely agree. And you take, I completely agree. You take the money that those clubs have got, and we're talking some of the Super League clubs have had £30 million of investment over the last 25 years. What have they got to show for it? They're still in debt, even those that are declaring profits. They're in debt, really, because they're, they're getting uh, a I, million and 1.25 million out, one, whatever it is, every season. There's probably f- five rugby league clubs in the UK that are making profit I think and you, and you can probably you can probably all guess guess them clubs I think there's about five or six who will be making profit each year and the rest even in Super League and Championship and League One they'll all be uh, going in debt or they'll already be in debt or they'll, they'll be certainly be on the way they'll be losing money annually uh, by by paying wages or by not getting the gates but you, you you're you, you can't just set up a, a just giving page every season, Dave. Matt also came in with uh, what is a problem is a load of clubs who bring nothing to the game holding it for ransom. So that's why I sort of had this massive debate Absolutely. with him as well. And we, uh, so he's obviously have a similar sort of thought to kind of what you were saying yeah. in one respect. Um, I'm not putting words in your mouth because we've already <laughs> talked that way through, by the way. Um, he says there's a myriad of issues, but money is paramount and can fix a lot of the game's ills. Super League being stronger is the only way to increase revenues for the sport. Um, Tony came in with a different point he said as well as funding it's an absolute disgrace that Sport England funding is based heavily on participation and the majority of that participation comes through junior rugby yet the community game sees virtually no money yeah I don't where, where does that money go then? does it get lost in <laughs> I, I don't know it's potentially uh, a it, it, good point it, that, that is alarming to be fair because it, yeah, the sports oh, and the sports England funding were cut, wasn't it? If, if I'm not mistaken. Last yeah, year. because participation levels went down. Went down exactly. And so, but, maybe in doing this and with Super League running its own competition, rugby league can focus on these more strategic points and push forward. Because I do know that there is a lot of good work being done behind closed doors at Red Hall. There's a lot of stuff that is being done that not a lot of people talk about and maybe they should talk about it more. Um, and maybe that's one of the issues that we have, you know, the whole communication issue is, is one of those things. Uh, I mean, let's face it, you know, we both love rugby league. We've had a, you know, a uh, heated Pardon debate there. Love rugby league. We we we've had a heated debate there, haven't we? You <laughs> know, we have. um, me and you disagree on a lot there. Because we do disagree with a lot, but ultimately we love the sport, yeah. don't yeah. we? You know, and that's 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 why. And as long as there is that passion, then rugby league ain't gonna die. You Hopefully. know, it won't no, die. No, it's it not. won't die. No, it and won't. not while you've got kids playing the I sport as well. Talking. But we need to look at things like all these other yeah. stuff. So maybe this has been almost like a big smoke screen for a bit of a power grab. This for the Super League clubs because they've wanted to grab the bulk of the catch. Um, but if you look at it more of a positive light, like I was saying, it does give the rugby league chance to focus on more strategic issues, doesn't it? Um, Alex suggested about loop fixtures. Loop, yeah, start again. Loop fixtures. Additional fixtures only dilute the fixture list in the long run. 
not to mention potentially causing an uneven playing field. Imagine a team is relegated by two points and their additional fixtures were against Wigan and Co, but the team safe had it easier. Well, obviously, the, the loot fixtures aren't, aren't against anyone, are they? The, so the top doesn't just play the bottom in a loot fixture, does it? It's, it does make it more competitive in a way that... Is it Saints could, could play Wigan? So Are you asking the question here? Because I don't know, honestly. I, you know, I, so. I, I, I don't... I might be wrong, but I don't think that the top team will play the bottom team in a loop fixture. I think it'll be more evenly balanced. But then again, going back, going back to the loop fixture, we've already got a loop fixture in Magic Weekend. Well, I, I know my feelings about Magic Weekend, but it's become a big know, part well, know, of the rugby league calendar. Well, I, know, I know my feelings about it as well, and that that's a loot fixture in itself. Mm. Pe people can't complain about loot fixture and then be like, oh, let's keep Magic Weekend, because Magic Weekend's a loot fixture. Sintelli's played Widness this year. Wooden Spoon against league leaders. There you go. Uh, Gavin agrees with you. He says that everyone should play each other twice, home and away, 22 rounds. But then he's chucked and he still likes his magic. He does still like magic. Uh, yeah, well, it is a loot fixture, though. It is. It might, it might be gold magic weekend, but it's still a loot fixture, just in a different location. Had a cracking couple of tweets as well of Martin as well, because I put, how do we make the most of what we've got and increase on it? These are the next important questions. I hope all stakeholders' views are taken into account and let's get organised. And then Martin said, all stakeholders except fans and players. So I sort of came back to him. I said, oh, you definitely want to include players and fans because they play the sport, they pay for the sport. Um, we don't have enough fans across the game, so we need proper consultation. This was my view. We need to examine the reasons for drop-off of playing numbers in teens at amateur clubs. We need to pull together and everyone should have a voice. Martin said that we should do, and supporters direct have been pushing for this as a third party, external to RFL and club politics, but they're just not interested. Are they not? It's quite an interesting view, that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so Martin asks about fans' engagement or lack of it. How do we fix it? And I think that he's touched on it there. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know about all clubs, but uh, I know Wigan have got a, a fan group. Um, they've got a select few, I, I can't remember how many are in this group, but it's not many, it, may, it might be ten of that, but they've, they've got fans of all different walks of life um, so so you get all, all types of views, you've got the older older people, the younger people men and women um, so you've got all these different types of walks of life and they, they meet up, I think, I think it's monthly mm -hmm. and they say uh, what, what are your views on this what are your views on that, how can we improve the atmosphere, how can we improve uh, gates, gate numbers, and that's really effective. But I don't. I think. I think it might just be Wigan that do that. It's of all clubs, which is it's quite shocking, really, to say that Wigan are the only club to to do that with the fans and interact with the fans and engage with the fans. Because I think it's the executive executive uh, director Chris Rodlinski who, who came up with the idea, mm -hmm. who put the idea into into action. But to say no, no other club in the game. On my, like, there might be, but I don't think there is. I, I, I can't recall anything. If we're going to be the only team in the game, the only club in the game to do that, then I think that, that's quite shocking, really. If you know of any other clubs that are doing that, let us know because we, we'd love to hear about how fans are engaging, maybe put something together. Obviously, That'd be good, obviously it? Halifax have got a good supporters' trust, haven't they? I mm -hmm. think they've got two supporters' trusts which, which do a lot of fundraising for the club and stuff like that. So obviously they've got a good relationship. I don't know if they meet up regular and, and discuss. We do have a Vicky yeah. fund, don't they? That's contributed mm. to players' wages and stuff in the past. And I don't know whether that's still quite as uh, active as it once yeah. was. And then, then other teams have got uh, just giving pages. You've got a right bee in your bonnet regarding just giving pages, haven't you? And rugby league clubs. Right. Tell you what, we could have this conversation all day and in fact me and him are likely to do that I think I need a drink after that to be fair so we're going to head off thank you very much for joining us just one final plug before we go do you want to mention again the U Journal get on to it improve your, your mental health your, your state of mind Lou Campbell is, has come up with this brilliant idea I can't wait to get it going uh, Just I think it's roughly £10 to, to buy and uh, yeah it's a, it's a game changer and uh, remember to, to get this shared as well. Share the video, spread the word. We want more people to get in touch 
uh, with us, uh, more people getting in touch every week, aren't they, Dave? As you've, you've just gone through a lot of tweets there. A lot of people are getting in touch. We want to get more people on board. Give us your thoughts or what you want us to discuss next week, and we'll gladly do it at Love Rugby League, at D Park ERL, or at uh, Dabsha Drew. Get in touch and send all your thoughts in to us. Drew? Good or, good or bad? Yeah, good or bad. Drew, thank you very much. Really enjoyed your company again. Uh, I'm going to take you my blood pressure tablet because we've had a go at each other on the fly there. We need some water. So we're going to head off. Thank you very much. Join us again next week.